This is a direct spore deposition for uh, growth on agar. This is a laminar, of, uh, laminar flow hood. It's homemade. Uh, it's important uh, to know that the air flows this way. You don't want anything going in there that is not at least somewhat sanitary. So try to make sure I don't have any cloth going in there. I'll spray my hands down and arms down with alcohol. Try to make sure that anything touching stuff in there is swabbed down with alcohol and you need to make sure that as you go in there that you don't get into areas that have a lot of turbulence. Anything that's unobstructive sh should have direct flow of air coming through here. But if I put my hand over in here, there's gonna be turbulence going behind these. A way of demonstrating this would be using some form of smoke. You can see that the smoke comes directly out. But if I put anything over here in front of this, I start to get turbulence. The air starts to move around in unpredictable ways. You want it to come straight out. So, with there's several different ways you can do spores deposition. And in fact, some people will simply do um, cloning. They'll get a piece of tissue from a mushroom and deposit it on the auger. That's fine. But what I am planning on doing today is has to do much more with uh, growing uh, from spores. Growing from spores allows you to get uh, a little more genetic variation than you would get if you try to just clone it. Cloning it, you only get the exact genetic makeup of the parent. So, what I like to do is I like to um, have the spores directly deposited on the auger. There are other techniques people will use. People will um, deposit the spores into a liquid and then put the liquid over, uh, drop it onto auger, and that works. I've seen uh, people deposit it over a uh, sterile piece of paper or a sterile uh, piece of aluminum foil and use it that way. And that's one way of doing it. But I like to do a direct deposition from, in this case, the mushroom directly onto the auger. Now to do this, I need to somehow suspend the gills above the auger. And one way I have used in the past is to use double-sided tape. 
apply it to top of the uh, petri dish and then attach the mushroom portion you're using onto the top of uh, the dish held in place by the double-sided tape. It's always a lot of fun trying to get the plastic coating off the tape. While keeping the tape on there. So I'm using the, the knife or the scalpel that I've already uh, sterilized so that I minimize the potential contamination. Once you've got your tape in place, make sure you have enough room so that the gills don't actually touch the auger. And then try to get the mushroom so that it will stick on top. At that point, I can open up my auger. I'm using spore uh, generation auger, but potato dextrose or uh, CMC would probably work just fine. Okay. One of the reasons I use a separate lid, basically a clean Petri dish, is at least for me every time I tend to uh, make auger tends to get a lot of uh, condensation on the lid I will leave this for at least several hours and up to a day once I'm finished these two have already been deposited I just take and switch the old lids for the ones that have the uh, bit of mushroom material. Not that I have to take anything off. These are now contaminated and I'll throw them away. Last thing I do, at least for the two processed auger strips, is I'll get some parafilm.
and seal it. This cuts down on any air getting into the uh, dish and probably at least as important, it keeps, as it keeps it from drying out. You may want to keep that dish for a month or two in the refrigerator, but if it's not uh, protected from dehydration, it will dry out and the fungus uh, or mycelium, mushroom mycelium will die. Last thing you do is label your specimens. I can't tell you the uh, issues you run into if you have to remember what you did last week. I also tend to put a P number here this would be P00, in other words, first generation. If I transfer it to a different culture, then that becomes P01. That way I keep up with what the generation is for this particular um, strain. And I don't have to, I can start um, being aware if there's problems with the uh, senescence of the culture. And the rest of it, these being oyster mushrooms, will be cooked. <laughs> okay, 